This is Patience, our Atlantic rowing boat. Um, she's designed to take a crew of two. As you can see, there's two rowing positions, one in the stern, one in the bow. Uh, myself and Craig will be rowing two hours on, two hours off for the duration of our trip, which is 3,000 miles, which will take roughly five to six weeks. Other stuff that we've got on the deck are these watertight hatches. There's a total of 11 of them. You can see they've got her, uh, hatch covers on there and they'll hold our food. Uh, we need to take 60 days worth of food, uh, both dry and wet rations and snack packs. So that's 6,000 calories in total per crew, and crew member per day. Uh, as we work further back into the boat, you can see into the cabin there, quite cosy, albeit we can get both of us in there should the conditions turn a little bit rough. Um, we've got lots of hatches and stuff down the side there that we can also store personal items in, um, things like sun cream, sunglasses, torches, that kind of stuff that we can get within the cabin. We've also got in the cabin our water maker, so we will be making our own water for the whole crossing. Um, that then comes out, gets pumped, we'll make about 20 litres per day, and that will be for both drinking and cooking. Inside the cabin on the right hand side we've got our navigation system, so we have about five waypoints to point direction as we go across the Atlantic and also our comm, sat phone, VHF radio will be in there. Um, we have to check in with the race organisers between 10 and 2 every day, they'll give us weather updates um, and conditions and plot, plot our course basically. Um, like I say, if the conditions do deteriorate, we can put our power anchor down, which I'll describe a little bit as we go forward on the boat, um, and then we'll both bunk down in the cabin, hopefully for not too long. Um, <coughs> we can also see on the, on the rear of the bulkhead there, there's a repeater panel for the GPS system, so when you're in your rowing position, you can see exactly what course you're on, what speed you're doing over ground, and your general direction towards Antigua. As we come forward, we've got our rowing gates that support the rowing positions and then coming forward into our front hatch. Just before I go onto the front hatch, you see we've got these yellow um, safety lines come down. There's also two on the deck. At all times when we're not in the cabin, we'll be harnessed on and with mandatory that we need to be clipped onto these should the boat capsize and then we can retrieve, retrieve the crew member. As we come further forward, we've got the forward cabin. Forage cabin is mainly for storage. You could get one person in there, but it's very tight and very cramped. So for our crossing, it'll be for storage. Things like power anchor, sea anchor, all our spares, there's a bucket in there which yes that is for us for, to go to the toilet on, there's no toilet on the boat so it will be going into a bucket. Um, we've also got immersion suits, life jackets, all our spare kits stored within there. You can see the black pole with the light on top, that's our navigation light and what you probably can't see in the shot on both the rear and forward cabin there are solar panels so all of our power is generated through solar panels backed up by two batteries in the rear cabin. Um, the idea being is that hopefully the batteries will be charged constantly via the solar panels. Should they fail for any reason, then we can still power the, the water maker essentially um, by, the, by the batteries in the cabin. We have got a hand water maker that again will be in the front cabin should we need to make water manually. Um, we also carry about a thousand litres of ballast water on this boat as well, um, along with emergency water should we need it. Um, we carry three sets of oars. At the minute currently there's only two sets on there. These two sets and a brand new set, should we lose a pair, snap a pair, then we've also got redundancy for that as well. So everything on the boat, every system has got some form of redundancy or spares should we need it. Um, that's pretty much the tour of patience. Um, thanks for having a listen to us and we'll see you in Antigua.